In this coding exercise, we have a little bit of an interesting situation. And the reason for this is because we're asked to do something that is pretty specific, where we have to build a method that finds an element in an array. But it doesn't just find it in an array, it finds it in a nested array, and it only searches in a very specific spot in the array. So for example, inside of this players array, we have five different arrays that have the player's number, and then they have the player's name. What we want to do is to build a method that will be past a collection that has nested elements exactly like this, and then it takes in a string, and then it performs a comparison test to see if that element exists. Now, when it does that, if the element exists, then it expects to have not just the element, not just something that says true it exists, but to have the entire array brought back to it. So for example, if you look on line 13 here, is if you call find element and you pass in the players array, which is the test array we have up there, and you pass in Jose Altuve, the expected result that should be returned is an array that has the number 27, which is his number, and then it has the index, or it has the, the actual name value. So as a value that we perform the search with. So first and foremost, what exactly is the purpose of this? When would you use it? Well, I have had to use similar kinds of things when working with, say, uh, the data that comes back from an API request. There's many times where I'll get data that comes back and it's in nested items, and then I have to perform a search query that goes to check and see if a certain value exists, and if it does, I need the entire object brought back. So that is definitely one example. Now the other purpose behind this is I want to show you not only how we can build this manually, but I'm going to show you that surprisingly enough, Ruby has a built-in method for this. And if you went through the exercise first and you researched it, you may have already found it. So we're going to go through two different solutions here. First, I'm going to create the method. So I'm going to say find element and it takes in a collection and it also takes in the element that we're searching for. So I'm going to do the manual solution first, and I'm going to actually use a comment to say manual solution, just so you know the difference on which one was a manual and which one is the automated one. So for this one, I'm going to take a collection, which is it's the argument that we have right here, and from there, I'm just going to iterate over it. So I'm gonna iterate over the collection, say do, and I'm gonna grab the C block variable, which there's nothing special about the C, it's just a element that we are iterating over. Usually I would do something like element or E or item, but I don't want that to get confused with what we're actually searching for, because remember our other argument up at the top in the method is the element. So the C block variable is going to represent each one of these nested arrays. So in this test case, this is going to represent this entire array first, then it's going to represent this one, and then this one, so on and so forth. So that's what the C is going to stand for. So now that we have that, what I want to do is I want to return the full array if, and this is where we're just going to parse it, if C with the bracket syntax of one, so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the number one index, the index of one, and each one of these items, that's going to be the name. So because of the way, in, uh, the way arrays are, zero is going to be the index value for all of these numbers, and then one is going to be the index value for all of the names. So I'm going to say, I want you to return the entire array if C1, or in other words, the set of names, is equal to the element that we're searching for. So let's come and let's actually test this out. I'm going to copy this 
and paste it down here. And let me just re-indent this. And now let's search for, not. we're not gonna search for the test value, let's search for one of the other ones. So I'm gonna say players, and in this case, let's go with Alex Bregman. So if this all works, then what is going to happen is this is going to return an array that has two and then Alex Bregman. So let's return that and see if that works. And there you go, that worked perfectly. You can see on the very bottom right here that that returned a single array of two and Alex Bregman. So all good on that side. So this is pretty good, and this is the manual solution. This works perfectly fine, and it really is only a couple lines of code. But there is a actual Ruby method for this. And I have to be honest, I never have used this method before, but it's a good one to know about. And it's also good, and part of the reason I wanted to go through this exercise was so you could see exactly kind of what's going on behind the scenes with it. So what we can also do is we can call the collection, so it's gonna be the nested array, and then we're gonna call the R association method, or the way you actually spell it out is R A sock, and then you pass in the element that you're looking for. So in this case, it's going to just be element, and now I'm gonna get rid of the entire manual implementation, and let's look at the bottom here and let's run it and see if this still works. So if I run this, you can see it, see it still works exactly the same as before. Now I'm going to delete our test data and let me actually come here and delete all of that. And now let's open up the, uh, let's open up an RSpec window. I say RSpec and this is going to be testing February 6th. And if I run this, you can see one example, zero failures. And also, just to prove that I'm not crazy, let's also just quickly rebuild that method. So if I say collection each do, and then iterate over with C, and then say return C if C with index of one is equal to the element, and now if I run this code again, you'll see all of the tests are still passing. So either one of these items will pass the test, but I wanted to show you because I think it's a good example of showing how Ruby definitely allows you to utilize multiple, uh, multiple methods and multiple processes to accomplish the same behavior. Typically, it's considered a best practice to utilize a built-in method whenever you have the ability to, like we have right here, and in which case we wouldn't even need find element. All we're essentially doing with find element is cloning this R ASOC kind of method, and that's perfectly fine because I think it's a good practice to be able to see what's be happening behind the scenes. And also there are gonna be many times, I can tell you this from experience, there is no way you're gonna have memorized every single method in the Ruby library. There are gonna be many times where you go out and you build a method only to find out later on down the line that there's already a method that does everything that you had to build manually. So it's always good practice to Go through the full list of methods when just kind of for fun. Get an idea of what they do and how you can use them. And I think you'll be surprised at when those can come in pretty handy. So nice work if you went through that. You now know how to essentially clone the R ASOC method to be able to parse data inside of nested arrays and to find elements.